Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, Intel have certainly had a very interesting time of it of late. And, of course, they've run into a lot of financial issues. There's a whole thing that's going on with their founders right now. But things do seem to be settling down for the company a little bit. But there is a big question. How will the company respond to AMD's, quite frankly, relentless onslaught of processors? And it seems that Intel are making some pretty drastic changes to their roadmap. We're going to talk about Nova Lake as well as Razor Lake in just a moment. But I want to start the video out actually with a benchmark of the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. Have I mentioned before how I hate both Intel and AMD's uh, naming conventions of the, some of their processors recently, but um, anyway, so this is a V-Ray score, and I want to give credit to HXL on Twitter for spotting this, and also WCCF Tech, who have compiled a, an assortment of processors to compare the 285K against. Long story short, we're looking at around a 25% deficit for the 14900K, excuse me, versus the 285K. Meanwhile, the 9950X is around 10% faster, so around uh, 49,400. I'm going to round up the scores just for everyone's sanity, around 45,000 points, and bringing up the rear, the 4900K is scoring around 35,600. Now, ultimately, I think these processors could actually be quite enticing in the marketplace. It's, of course, going to depend on things like the prices. There are a lot of leaks from retailers, but just how accurate those leaks are, honestly, I don't know at this point. But things like motherboard availability, um, whether there is any room left in the tank, i.e., for example, if a new BIOS is going to slightly improve performance. I mean, let's just be honest, it's not going to double performance, but it's a possibility a couple of percent here or there could increase. And ultimately, in some benchmarks, 3 or 4% can have a massive improvement in performance, especially, for example, if also it coincides with Windows Update. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it's always possible. So, of course, until the processor becomes available and in reviewers' hands, you guys know the story. It's also going to be interesting because the Ryzen 9000 series X3D processors were initially rumored to launch later this year, but then for whatever reason, they were either postponed, and I say that with air quotes because ultimately AMD had not confirmed the release date, or they were never intended to release this year, and instead they were going to be early next year with CES. But there's a possibility, actually, the eight cores could at least see the light of day I mean, maybe in November. I've seen that posted a few times at this stage. Honestly, I've not heard anything myself regarding that, so we'll just wait and see. But uh, it's going to be very interesting. The Ryzen 9000 series honestly just hasn't sold super well. And I think also, even Arrow Lake, I think while it could be a very cool processor, the problem is, again, you're going to need an entirely new motherboard. And while, just like with, let's say, a Ryzen 9000 processor, if you're upgrading from, let's say, a 7800X3D or something like that, yes, you're going to get better performance, but is it going to be worth it if you're only gaming? I mean, of course, some games, yes, if they're very frame rate sensitive, like CSGO or something like that, maybe. But for a lot of folks, it's going to really be GPU dependent. And I'll be very curious to see the prices of cards like Blackwell. Quite frankly, I don't think NVIDIA are going to be charging, you know, $299 with a pack of chewing gum being thrown in for free with RTX uh, 5090 or even the 5080s, to be honest. So I think, you know, if it's a case of, well, do you go with a CPU and a motherboard and a new graphics card or throw all of that cash into savings and buying a high-end graphics card, I can kind of see why a lot of folks are just waiting. But anyway, let's hop, skip, and jump our way to new, some new rumors. So you may remember that Arrow Lake S was reportedly going to be receiving a refresh. I've spoken about this several times at this point. Uh, the early reports were that the refresh would basically still be eight performance cores, but also the number of E cores would rise from 16 to 32. I don't really need to elaborate much more than that, but basically extra cores go brr. However, that seemed to have either not been true or 
Instead, it had been changed, and instead, mostly, the differences come from the NPU. So basically, the core count was identical. There were perhaps going to be some raised clock frequencies, so, you know, the P and the E cores would increase their clock frequencies a couple of hundred megahertz, whatever, but the NPU would see a big shift in performance. But now there are reports online, and this is starting initially from Panzerlide on the Chip Health forums, that, well, long story short, it's cancelled, it's canned, it's done, it's finito. Now, this also is interesting for a couple of different reasons. Um, for one, this seems to be a very new decision. In fact, I actually was speaking to someone, let's just say several days ago, and they told me that... Um, the refresh was still on, but again, it was only the NPU, and now they've basically said, yeah, actually, it is canned, but it's a really new decision. Now, I don't know how well that new decision is. For example, it could be new, but it takes a couple of weeks or a month or two to start filtering out. Um, so I'm not exactly certain exactly when this was decided upon. Either way, the real weird thing about this is that this was on a new platform, as I'm sure you're probably aware. The refresh was going to be on the 1851 socket, which is the same one as you're going to see like the 285K and other Arrow Lake processors work on, of course. So, <laughs> from what I understand, Nova Lake, we'll talk about that in a second, um, it's a new generation of processors, it's actually on a new socket, guys. So, what this basically means, I mean, hopefully, that is not correct information, it is on the same socket, but it doesn't seem like it is, therefore, LGA 1851 could be on a quote-unquote dead socket, and I don't really need to say much more than, like, that would be kind of weird, that's a very short shelf life, basically, for a lot of folks, so if that is true, that may, I mean, I don't know, that 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 might off that might put some people off. On the other hand, if you're like a hardcore, you know, chap and you've got the cash, maybe it wouldn't bother you to buy a new motherboard. Let me know in your thoughts and the comments on that one. Like, does it bother you perhaps with a new socket or eh? I don't care because I would go with a new motherboard anyway. Okay, so let's finish the video off with the last piece of news. So, Nova Lake is a processor that you may have heard of regarding. Um, Intel's future plans, again, because the refresh for desktop, and I want to stress, this is desktop, seems to be dead. This theoretically will be the next processor. So to my understanding, you have Coyote Cove as well as Arctic Wolf for its two types of CPU cores. And the little bit I know about this processor, I'll try to get more specifics at some point, but again, SMT does not seem to be in the big cores, for what it's worth. And also, the decode may actually be, well, let's just say wider. I don't want to say too much more on that, because I'm still trying to get a little more information regarding Intel's plans for this. Because, uh, again, we are talking about processor that's <laughs> quite a bit of time out. But yeah, so basically, um, just to reiterate what I said, there are two types of... CPU cores, basically you have a Coyote Cove and Arctic Wolf, according to what I've been told, and the uh, E cores are going to be a little bit wider, and again, the P cores do not feature SMT. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these things actually perform. <laughs> it's going to be, let's just say, well, quite cool, I think. Um, I just want to finish the video, however, with a new piece of information, and this is a Razor Lake. Now, unfortunately, I do not know much about Razor Lake at all. Uh, this is breaking information, and uh, this has been leaked by HXL. Again, this is the successor to Nova, to Nova Lake S. Uh, Bionic Squash on Twitter has also stated the same thing. Um, unfortunately, there is no information regarding this. I've spoken to one person, and I think, and I stress the word think, that they are on the same platform. So, let's say you were to upgrade for Nova Lake, you should be able to put in Razor Lake into the same board. However, it's Intel, so don't, don't take that to the bank. Uh, anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed it or found it 
you know, somewhat informative. If you did, well, you know what to do because it's YouTube. Leave a like and all of that stuff and obviously subscribe if you're not. Apologies for not being on camera for this one. It is absolutely chaos. Um, let's just say <laughs> there's been some interesting events over the last couple of days. Basically, the boiler blew, so trying to organize that. Uh, end of the month, I'm also going on hol holiday vacation thing because it's my friend's uh, wedding. So let's just say it's, it's been a bit of a day. Uh, so apologies for not being on camera, but uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be more normal. Well, normal is relative, but my version of normal. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.